um, and welcome to our final screening of this year's BHFF. My name is Diana Jelorca and I'm one of the programmers of the festival. Thank you so much for being here. Um, for our final screening this year, we're in incredibly proud to feature uh, a special presentation, which is the 30th anniversary uh, retrospective screening of Kudus, a film from 1989, some of you may know well, um, but this nevertheless is a rare um, theatrical projection of a quite a rare print. So in fact, we hope that this might incite someone somewhere to restore this film. Um, so uh, the film was directed by Ademir Kenovic, uh, who is also a jury member at the festival this year. Um, and it was co-written by him and Abdullah Sidran. And it was, as we note, uh, my colleague Amir Husak and I, in our programmer's notes, it is one of the last great Yugoslav films, um, not to mention one of the greatest Bosnian films ever made. Um, it has gar garnered a cult following in the region and is often quoted. Um, and uh, it is a really wonderful character study, an insightful character study, but it's also a study of structures bigger than a single individual's, such as patriarchy and dispossession, economic and otherwise. Um, we are uh, very happy that Ademir, the director, and the lead actress, Nezhana Bogdanovic, will be here after the screening for a Q&A, so please stick around, and I will say more about them after the screening. Please enjoy Kudos. Thank you. There is one cooking. I put it on the liquor. I'm a little bit of 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 a Koliko ti je sve ko godina? Tri! Evo samo da mi je znat, do kada ćeš ti imat tri godine? Dok ne izađem izgleda. Thank you for staying on. As I noted in my introduction, we will say a few words about uh, the director, Ademir Kenovic and Snežana Bogdanovic, the lead actress, before they join us on the stage. This is my co-programmer, Amir Husak. And this is my co-programmer, Diana Jalic. Nice Thank to you. Meet you. Um, Ademir Kenovic is an award-winning Bosnian producer and film director. He graduated from the University of Sarajevo in English Literature in 1969 and then studied film and art at the Denison University in Ohio, here in the States. In 1989, he was appointed professor at the Academy of Performing Arts uh, in Sarajevo, Department of Directing and Film Production. As one of the founding partners of film production company Refresh, he has been producing films since the early 90s. During the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, he directed and produced numerous war documentaries, including uh, the, the British uh, Academy of Film and Television Award uh, awarded uh, film Sarajevo, A Street Under Siege. Mr. Kenovic uh, also directed films, uh, including Kudus and, and A Little Bit of Soul, um, are today widely considered as classics of pre-war Bosnian and Yugoslav cinematography. Likewise, A Perfect Circle from 1997 represents one of the most important post-war Bosnian films to date. Snežana Bogdanović, our lead actress, became known for her leading roles in Kudus, Original Forgery and My Brother Alexa, for which she also received numerous national film awards. Her role of Badema in Kudus that you just saw garnered her nomination for a European Film Award for Best Actress and also a win with their Special Spirit Award. Her work has also included multiple leading roles on Serbian television, including a Serbian adaptation of the HBO show In Treatment. At the peak of her career, due to political unrest and war in former Yugoslavia, Snežana left the country and moved to the United States. She currently lives here in New York City. Snežana's most recent work was in Stitches, 
by Miroslav, uh, Miroslav, Miroslav Terzic, written by Elma Tataragic, a friend of the festival and one of the programmers of Sarajevo Film Festival. Um, and this film is premiered this year at the Berlin Film Festival. She also finished a film called The Sun, um, directed by Bosnian director Ines Stanovic, currently in post-production, and we very much look forward to showing this film in BHFF in future iterations. So please join us in welcoming Ademir and Snežana to the stage. Good evening and an official welcome to both of you. We're thrilled to have you here. Good evening. And as I said in my introduction, incredibly proud to, um, uh, to have this retrospective screening on the 30th anniversary of the film. I um, wanted to start with you, Ademir. Um, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about the origin of the film. Um, it is based on a true story. Um, or we hear, um, uh, we see a quote from the man, um, and uh, you wrote um, this film together with Abdullah Sidran, uh, who actually makes his apparently screen debut in this film as well. Um, uh, how did you come to this story? Did, did he bring it to you or you brought it to him? And my understanding is you also interviewed um, 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 the, uh, the man that the film is about in, in the prison as you were developing the film. Tell us a little more about how it came about. Yeah, first of all, uh, I, I, I'd like to uh, say thank you very much for all of you who organized this uh, beautiful festival. And I like to uh, thank the audience for watching this uh, pre-historic movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we uh, Sidran and uh, me were discussing uh, um, pro the next project, and then I, I had a call uh, of a friend of mine who was a lawyer and who knew about this case. So I talked to him and he told me about the existence of the girl. So th that was the, the, the kind of a first, first initial um, uh, uh, touch which, which uh, gave us uh, will to, to make this movie. Then we... Uh, the, 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 uh, Similar story happened really a couple of years before, 1985. So we made a serious research of the story. We went first uh, uh, talked to the lawyer who was defending the, uh, the judge who was uh, 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 who gave him 15 years of the prison uh, and his uh, and her families and then uh, him himself in prison. So after that. Uh, we spent uh, like uh, two months in a, in a uh, mountain in a, one little house uh, and we wrote the script. So that's how it started. I was wondering then, um, you mentioned also that there was another case and specifically when we're thinking about the 80s, um, it was also a time when uh, a little more conversation uh, was, more conversations were happening actually about uh, specifically domestic violence, violence against women as well, and these things started appearing more in the paper. But I was, I was curious whether this film has kind of pushed these kinds of conversations more into the, uh, you know, into the public sphere at the time, do you remember? Uh, probably. Uh, we, uh, really, uh, uh, our, our intention was first uh, to, uh, to make a story about uh, human beings, not about uh, simplified, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the guy who is just a very rough guy or the girl who is a very uh, like a m moving girl. Uh, we just wanted to somehow discover um, uh, what what is the real background of the uh, becoming such a person as they became. So, the, uh, in fact, social background was very very important, and uh, in in our understanding. So I know that Snezhana is uh, talking very often. Uh, strongly about defending and her character and trying to 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 show the the positive side of of the uh act of the of the character she played so she, maybe she absolutely and I, i'm going to uh, piggyback on that Snezhana. um uh, i won't talk to you about 
this incredible character that you portrayed here. She is the film is called Kudus uh, after the male protagonist, but but I last think she's na last equal, name, yeah, exactly. Thought, but I think she's equally as a protagonist, and uh, um, to my mind, it could have been called Bad Badima as well because uh, uh, <laughs> she you. is she is really such a complicated young woman who is defiant and rebellious um, in this environment in which. Uh, what a woman does is incredibly di indisciplined in really strict ways. So the second we meet her, we already know that she's kind of an outcast because she has a child out of wedlock mm -hmm. and she's so free-spirited. Yes, uh, tell us more about it. I find it just I, incredible. Yeah, you, you said it nicely. She really is a free spirit. Well, um, I didn't know much about her. Um, I've just... Knew, I've just heard the story, and as an actress, you know, um, I did a lot of research. Uh, I've seen some photos, but after that, I forgot everything, you know, and I and I just became that person. Maybe that's not how she was, you know, how she's been. But um, I tr I put trust in my intuition, you know, Sam, and. Uh, um, I admired her free spirit, and um, uh, I connected to her uh, fight uh, against the tradition, uh, fight against what's expected from her to be, who she was, you know, how to dress, who to date, where to live, you know. And um, I, I kind of, you know, I found something in that girl that, deeply resonated with me, you know, and uh, I didn't know then, but now, after so many years, you know, I think that she kind of opened the door, which I said a couple of days ago, for feminism in Bosnia, you know, and um, that was amazing to me, you know, she was really strong and, you know, I admire that. Absolutely, and she's she's a victim of a horrific crime that took her life, but she also has agency. In all the scenes that we see her, she has strength and agency. She has her own eye, and she won't be defied um, and yes, denied. Yes, and, and, and we feel for her. But she, she didn't want to live there. She didn't want to stay there. She didn't. She hated everything in that, you know, in, in, the, in her village, you know. She wanted to move on. She, she dreamed of a better life, you know, of better possibilities and choices for her. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is where we all, I guess, agree with her. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, something that is really that I found always uh, amazing in your films is how you show the people in the, on the margins in, in Bosnia Herzegovina. This also happens in Ovo Malodusha, your other film, and several other films, where a lot of direct directors have opted shooting in capital, for example. In Sarajevo, you have often preferred to go and shoot in these places that seem godforsaken, and people who are struggling with a variety of different issues, um, obviously not having a, you know, a lack of cultural, social capital, financial capital, etc., that makes them into practical victims in, in many ways. Um, and I wonder really, where, where did this interest to, to show this um, come from? Uh, have you spent a lot of time in these kinds of environments as a, as a study? Not at all, in fact. Uh, the, I, I, I was living all, always in the center of the Sarajevo, or in the center of the... But I always felt that uh, uh, suburbs are the most vital parts of the, uh, the, the you know, the environment where, where people are living. I always felt that uh, somewhere is be, uh, between uh, this kind of a uh, uh, urban or modern and uh, uh, very uh, a kind of conservative village thing somewhere in between is uh, uh, something which which moves people stronger than uh, on these two places at the same time you know talking about uh, transferring uh, a story from the real life to a film um, Life has its own logic. Uh, film has completely different logic. So uh, I couldn't say, well, it's uh, transferred what, what we knew and what we saw and what we feel. It somehow helped us to uh, reflect that 
life logic in a completely different way, in completely different media. And I felt that uh, always that, that these ambiences, uh, which are which are not like uh, uh, stable, are the best uh, basis for uh, telling the stories. Uh, somehow, I like those people. I love those people. I love that uh, way, uh, way of life. Although I, as I said, I, I'm not the part of it. Maybe it it was helping me uh, to be kind of a more objective somehow towards these people than towards the people from inside. So maybe a question for Snezhen, I guess also for you, Ademir, and I'm wondering during the process of shooting this film, during the production, um, the conversations, maybe you were possibly also defending uh, Badaman possibly as a character, and uh, how, how, how did this work actually between the actors and the other people who were obviously extras in these films, because I can imagine you were in some places where Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I originally am from Belgrade, you know, so I'm really, <clears throat> I was an urban girl coming to suburbs of Sarajevo, you know, which I didn't know much about. But I guess once I was placed in there, you know, I just started breathing, you know, these people and characters, you know, talking to them, practicing. Also, I mean, um, it's always lost in translation, you know, but I did different accent, you know, which is, you know, different dialect in this movie. So I was stealing from everybody around me, you know, I was, you know, I really, um, I was working hard. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, how would I say, you know, this is one of those movies where, where everything kind of, uh, is balanced, all our energies, you know, all our work, you know. Ademir was really great with actors, you know. He, his, his, his work was so subtle, you know, detailed, you know, so gentle. And uh, I guess that we all were so encouraged, you know. So I only have like great memories about the whole process. Thank you. Uh, one of the, um, the, qu the quote we see from Yunus Kecho, the, the man that the f film is, uh, whose story the film is based on is, uh, this is my translation, it was slightly different on the screen, one can't fight against power when one can't know it, see it. Um, perhaps he was referring to something within himself, a certain kind of force um, that uh, um, compelled him to uh, commit such crime of passion. But I also see it as commentary on these bigger structures which uh, patriarchy, uh, economic dispossession, uh, being kind of uh, left on the margins of society, and so so placing the story as as you talked about just a minute ago in such spaces really becomes a microcosm um, that that uh, that reflects a lot more than a single story, a tragic story of one family. Um, but then, uh, uh, and so it, within that context, the role of community is also incredibly important, and how the community reacts um, to um, this event. Most of the people that knew both of them before uh, the murder kind of protect him and uh, work against the police because there's a kind of different um, um, authority or institutional power that they have a, maybe an instinctive um, reaction against. Maybe you can talk more about that. And I also wanted to ask both of you about the the um, the the role of humor in the film, because we heard quite a few laughters and that's one of the most leg legendary aspects. Mm -hmm. Well, um, first of all, uh, uh, he, wa he was an uh, uneducated man. Uh, at the same time, uh, he felt deeply uh, some uh, primary logics of life and uh, of existence. Uh, in a way that he expressed sometimes uh, these uh, sentences which were really deeply philosophically gro grounded in uh, what, uh, what, what aspect of society in that moment was. Well, you know, now when you see it from this perspective, uh, you, we all know that he was right, that there was something wrong, deeply wrong in society at the time. Uh, there was a, n uh, s some kind of a system which was disbalanced, and uh, the, uh, there was something wrong in in uh, in, in a way people behaved towards people concerning the uh, 
social uh, ways. Uh, so that's that's all all I can I can comment. I I was uh, 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 well aware. You know, uh, the thing is that uh, everybody was, of course, uh, having this negative uh, uh, view of somebody killing somebody, aggression and all this. At the same time, uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, tenderness towards these uh, uh, characters uh, was, uh, was raised because everybody felt that uh, they were products of a, of a uh, somehow something which was not good in society. At the same time, I must say now, to, uh, coming back to, to Snezhana and actors and uh, people who worked in it, uh, I was privileged to work with a superb uh, group of people, starting with Snezhana and uh, all the rest, uh, which uh, everybody uh, contributed strongly to the creating of this uh, uh, film world, which became kind of recognized of uh, uh, lots of people as uh, reflecting something which they can uh, uh, communicate with and that, that they can uh, uh, identify with. Uh, I just want to add something. I agree with Vladimir. Um, you know, like. The social uh, circumstances of life in this story, uh, when you see, I mean, these people are pretty poor, you know, and uh, they um, they lack like basic education, you know, and uh, uh, basic things in life, you know. So there is a lot of sadness and desperation, you know. It's not that it's uh, how would I say it, that it's going to justify their actions, but at least it's going to give some perspective to how they feel and what they do, you know? So, and uh, just to understand better, you know? I mean, it's, uh, it's easy to convict, you know? And he is convicted and there's no doubt about it. But I just wanted to, to put a different light, you know, on his life and his experience, you know? Um, and you also asked about this humor, yes. You know, it's it's really also, it's something that's lost in translation. I always say, you know, Bosnia is famous for its jokes, you know. And uh, I mean, it's like, uh, I'm so sorry that some of them just didn't, you know, didn't go through, you know, it's just, yeah, it's really hard, you know, it's to- dark humor. Exactly, exactly, dark. very dark. But while we were shooting, you know, there wasn't a day, you know, you know, without a joke, like, a like a terrible joke, you know, I mean, we were, I mean, it was amazing. That's how I remember this whole period. Inappropriate jokes. Yes, yes, all the yeah. time, yeah. And, yeah. And, we, and we should not, yeah. I thought I heard a gasp in the audience because some of you may have noticed that one of the most memorable scenes was kind of jumped, skipped over the train Yeah, because, scene. yes, mm -hmm. yes, cut out, yeah. Apologies. It was not that. that it's cut out. I think the copy, the original print that yeah. uh, was available, yeah. um, was just simply damaged, and several frames are missing, unfortunately. M but maybe we'll get the right one restore. in ten years. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And I have to ask because uh, I was this time I was like, there is a lot of drinking in a film. Did you drink also while on the set a lot? But you know, the the thing is that now I would love to drink because I. I, I had a, we'll do that a horrible that. shock uh, watching this movie. So I feel like I would really we'll get uh, completely drunk because I, you know, but I don't drink too much really. I, I, I like to have aperitif, uh, you know, glass of wine, but uh, uh, no. Uh, but it was, it was just this ambience in, in which we, we, there is this uh, famous scene when they are uh, making uh, booze, making uh, brandy, and the, the, they offer the, the uncle uh, to drink something. He says, uh, you know, that I don't drink when I'm driving. Well, maybe beer for me. So it's like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, it's just uh, those people are yeah, yeah, that yeah, way. There, there are many uh, lines from this movie that people just after this movie oh, yes. started using like on a regular basis, like in Sarajevo, in Bosnia. And I recently heard one. I, I, I guess that's true that when it's like in, in when the weather is terrible, and you know it's raining and uh, it's windy with thunders, and then people say, "In this weather, bet you 
killed Padema. Is that true? <laughs> I, I was, I'm listening to that all the time, and then I think, oh, they don't know how right they are because we made this uh, weather like this. That was created. We wanted to to create this like uh, 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 not ill. Uh, there was fake rain. It, it was everything was fake uh, uh, <laughs> over there. This film, <laughs> you know, this like ice, uh, snow, and rain, and everything was created in order to uh, to just uh, use this uh, kind of. You couldn't if it would be uh, real uh, rain and real. The film couldn't be shot. You know, you don't shoot the films in the real weather. That's a perfect segue to my next question. It's a question that I wanted to ask also when I was looking at the credits this time at the film. Um, it's noticeable that the production, that the film was mostly financed out of Bosnian sources. Um, production was kind of a, almost entirely a Bosnian affair, which is unimaginable today. I don't know of any film that is made in Bosnia that is not a co-production with mostly foreign European money and so on. Um, can you speak a little bit about that? Because you have worked before the war and after the war for filmmakers, funding and access is obviously a huge thing, right, to kind of make these ideas. Yeah, well, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, apart from the uh, industry, West Coast here, the, the whole world is uh, financed uh, by uh, uh, co-productions, by partners uh, with the different sides. And uh, when when you know everybody tries to to have to to have the story which will attract uh, the different partners which would feel their story like their, their story and so in in nowadays we we make a, a film with uh, 10 to 20 percent of local financing and uh, all the rest from outside whether it's uh, uh, you know I would say the whole Europe you have France which uh, has uh, its Potentials, but still has a co-production. So you have a, a little bit uh, countries which are more rich, like uh, England or Germany. But uh, in in most of the productions, you have these uh, partnerships, and you have this uh, uh, tries. Uh, uh, I would say very fierce tries to 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 put together um, the pro uh, the production at at the certain times uh, before the war. Uh, like 35 years ago and so on, uh, we had one period where, where uh, states understood the necessity to finance uh, the, uh, uh, their st our stories or their stories. Uh, uh, your uh, a previous answer about the, the rain and the kind of weather you depicted in the murder scene uh, is, a, is a segue to a question I had as well. Uh, tell us, uh, my understanding is that the, um, the actual uh, murder was fairly gruesome. Tell us about your decision to depict it off screen, to not show it, to not show the spectacle uh, of violence. Uh, because in a way we could say that it, it is even uh, perhaps more horrific to imagine what happened, but at the same time you didn't go there. Yeah, well, you know, the, uh, just to come back to this, uh, 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 my idea of a uh, film is uh, uh, something which has its own logic. Uh, we, uh, you know, I never felt uh, normal, not nor 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 necessary to show knife, blood, and uh, screams and everything. This uh, this specific uh, um, uh, cry which happened happened in a, in a most hor horrible way uh, within the family of relatives with the kids and everything. So it's like, it's something that you, first of all, you, you can't imagine, you, you, you cannot even uh, document it uh, if, if, if you wanted to. Um, th this was not about uh, how the murder was done. It was, this was how, uh, what, what kind of a feeling it provoked in a, you know different uh, characters. So, so I. Um, uh, by the way, you know, uh, trial, trailer in which she trailer in which uh, she went with the daughter uh, was also somehow in my mind symbolic to to her uh, uh, understanding of a uh, not not stability uh, as a character. Ruthlessness. Yeah. 
uh, I also wanted to uh, ask both of you about working with Ivana Legin, the girl um, who became an uh, iconic figure as well after this film. She was adorable, really. She was so sweet, tiny, little button, you know. How old was she at the time? Uh, she was five, I think, at the time. Um, but, you know, totally unspoiled. Kids are just... You know, it's so easy for them because they t to act. You know, because it's like they're playing little games. You know, it's like it's, this is what they do. So she was just playing a game with us. You know, and of course we were hiding all the time. You know what the real story is about and about the murder and everything. You know, but um, I don't know. Later, later on, she she learned about it and 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 got so upset. I guess she. She was calling me mom all the time. She always would say that she, that she had like two moms and two dads. She was she was really sweet, sweet kid. Well, the the problem with the with the kids in the movie, everybody knows that. Uh, uh, if if the kid is not good, if it's artificial, if it's not good, it's uh, the, the film is flop immediately. If the kid is good, then uh, it can endanger all the rest of the crew. So. So, so I, I said uh, with with serious, serious feeling that uh, well, I was privileged to work with with such a, such a actors, starting from Snezhana, the the uh, who 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 raised up to the, uh, the like uh, convincing uh, kids uh, ways of uh, presenting their characters. So it was not easy. Thank you. Thank you. But we all auditioned to this movie, you have to know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the time, you know, in former Yugoslavia, I, I have to say, you know, um, it's a small region and um, people from industry usually uh, know people, know actors, you know, and stuff. But anyway, this was very unusual. Vladimir did a huge audition, you know, that lasted for months, you know, for the whole region, ex and, and prior to this, I just, I, I, I worked a lot in the theater, you know, I had many theater roles, but this was my first movie role, so. So, Yunus Kecho was sentenced 15 years, was supposed to be released in 2001, however, a few years later, the war starts. Do you know what happened to him? Yeah, what happened yeah, to I know. The girl? That's that's a continuation of a tragic story. Uh, he uh, he escaped prison and he went to to the uh, village and he lived with his mother uh, afterwards. And then uh, the girl came and uh, lived with them. Uh, and then uh, she was shot by a sniper, snipers. And then he went to to take her body and uh, she got killed too. So they were buried together. Very unfortunate. This was in, obviously in the 90s, in the middle of the war, right? In the, uh, around exactly. Sarajevo. 94. And they were living near Sarajevo? Like right, they were living like uh, uh, 30 miles, 30 kilometers, 35 kilometers away from Sarajevo. It's awful. So this is, is it as one of the, like I said in my introduction, last great Yugoslav films finishes on this note what would happen in 2001. But of course, now we know that before that came 91. Right. So we the story were, got concluded during that period. Yeah, what, when, when, we, when we made this, uh, we were aware of a of connection to, to um, Odyssey, you know. So it was a deliberate kind of a connecting to something which is out out of this world. Yeah. All right. Should we open it for the audience? I think See we should open the, it to yeah. the audience. Questions. There should be mics going around. Um, so raise your hand. We have one right here. Now that that you said that um, the continuation and the unhappy ending, is there a sequel planned? I mean, like Star Wars have several sequels. Maybe you can have. No, uh, the, I, I got this question already like 29 years. Uh, I don't believe that uh, in, in it's a time for for continuation of, of this movie. I, I somehow, at, at least not myself, I'm not sure. You know, we made a 
thorough documentary, documentary about this, researching and so on. Yeah, I, I have just one question. I've, I'm native Sarajevo. I finished schools and everything, and I lived here in New York. So this is a great moment to uh, go back and think about Bosnia, think about Bosnian mentality. I've just, uh, I would like to try to frame this in social context more of who killed who or who that he did what. What would you say today? Can you bring the mic a little bit closer to How would you say that this particular locality, you say about 35 kilometers from Sarajevo, how is it different? now from 1989, if at all? I do think that uh, uh, people in Bosnia went through catharsis of the war, of the serious aggression. Uh, so I would say that uh, people are much uh, less naive. And somehow, once you get and touch the bottom, you are much freer to move uh, in the right direction. Although it doesn't look like that in this particular moment concerning the global political situation in Balkan at all. But uh, I can tell you, my feeling is, not, not uh, commenting uh, connections to this movie, is that uh, I know uh, lots of young people who are, uh, um, first of all, like a, like a fourth generation of uh, uh, their parents, they are not first. They live different uh, life. They they are living uh, in something which is already future. And I do think that uh, very soon, uh, the this potential will transfer into something which will uh, help creating much more organized ambience than we had. Thank you. A question here in the front. Um, what happens in the scene, the famous scene that was missing from this print? In the train. Who's gonna, who's gonna replay the, the dialogue? <laughs> Anyone from train? the audience? Oh, oh yes. Uh, uh, I think that the, the conductor, you know, in the uh, uh, on the train, uh, knows that the father uh, lies about her age, you know. And he and that, that, oh, actually, that she lies about her age because she was told so. Because of the yes, ticket. because of the and ticket, you know, the ticket. Uh, uh, yeah, the the price of the ticket is lower for the small kids, and that that's why she was told to lie about the, the, her age, and then. Yeah. When he asked her, well, for how long are you going to be three? And then she says, until I get off the train. Snezhana, <laughs> um, you mentioned that uh, this movie actually started a process of feminism in, in Bosnia. So that's really curious. And I, wanted, uh, and I want to hear any reflection on that. Because there is nothing sexy about violence against women, and there is nothing that you can get into the character unless you know something more, which you didn't have a chance to interview her, right? The perpetrator is always there, and he can tell the story in any ways. But my question really is something else, and it's a little bit more to Ademir. There was another movie in the 50s, mid-50s, and it was called after a woman who was a Roma woman, it was also based on a true story. And, and that, that's right. And it's a beautiful movie as well. I, I, just as a contemporary of this one, I, I really love your acting and everything that you have done. But you also show the violence only or the, you know, when men, it's really happening on the outskirts. It's not happening in the center. How come? Well, um, I I wouldn't agree with you. I'm sorry about uh, violence happening on the only in the outskirts of big cities. You know. That's what the movie. Yeah, and yeah. well, the movie. Yeah, it's you know this is where the story happened. This is wh where the story was based. You know, and that's logical. You know, but um, 
violence unfortunately happens everywhere, even today, you know, and I don't know how we solve that. I'm not sure, even here in New York and, you know. So uh, the other night we had a director from Creation Movie who said my next movie will be about domestic violence against women in Croatia in Zagreb. So that's something that needs to be addressed over and over and over again. You know, we, we make some progress, but it's a slow progress. This is what I think about it. And uh, what was the first part? The feminist, you said. Yeah, yeah. Fem this uh, about feminism. Well, that was that's my observation. I wouldn't, you know, I, you know, I don't. At the time, I wouldn't think about that. I didn't know about that. But today, from today's perspective, you know, when I look at her after so many years, you know, and when I see how people thought about her, how they look at her. You know, what kind of rebel she was. Today, maybe she wouldn't be even a rebel for what she did. You know, this is this would be totally acceptable in every way. So, uh, was she different from anybody else around her? Yes. Was she behaving differently? Yes. Was that accepted, supported? No. You know, so this is where I think, you know, like that she was fighting for some freedom, freedom for women, you know, for they for their choices. That's why I said that. And if I could also add that, I mean, it's also important to note that um, feminism as basically, in Bosnia, it doesn't, it, it doesn't feel like it didn't exist. You know, it's important to remember that anti-fascist front, front of women was formed in Bosnia for whole of Yugoslavia in the 40s, uh, in Bosnsko Graho. So that's an important also element to, to kind of remember that, you know, yes, it existed, but, you know, it was never, you know, at the, on the level of like, you know, in a public sphere, obviously, was not as present, but there's a long history of at least really successful, sim at least sometimes even symbolic attempts to really bring this into a public discourse. But that's why, that's why we need to tell these stories, you know, to put the light on these kind of stories, you know. Wherever there is, uh, you know, unhappiness and uh, where these kind of things happen, you know, we as artists should be there just to talk about it, you know. I guess that's important. And in nuanced ways, and by the way, I talked to Nebuša Slipčević, the director of Srebenka, that you know that whose next documentary is about domestic violence, and he's running into a lot of red tape on this topic. Uh, people unwilling to uh, speak up, speak against powerful people um, who are committing these types of crimes. So obviously the story is never over. We cannot expect one single film to resolve the issue or to be taken to uh, be saying everything about the issue, that it's uh, universalizing the story. Sorry, I get passionate when I talk about this. Um, but uh, uh, indeed, important to continue the conversation. Other questions? I think we had one over there. And then, uh, oh, hi, there we go. Uh, Sabrina Bektasevich. So I was born in 1989, which is when this movie came out in Sarajevo. Um, and my question's a bit taboo, but I have to ask. So the characters are in an, an Islamic village, and that's where my family is from, uh, non-educated. And I was in awe, in shock, amazed, in love with how you integrated um, Islam and Muslims into the film. And just like small comments like, oh, I don't dress like a Muslim woman or, you know, at her funeral, they are praying, um, you know, the Islamic prayers. I'd love to know how your, your thoughts and your vision for integrating, you know, Islam and, and Muslims in, into the film. Well, uh, in fact, uh, we, we didn't integrate anything. We just behaved uh, naturally the way uh, uh, Bosnian people live. Uh, it's, uh, there, are, there are so many different people living, uh, you know, uh, so many different nationalities. Uh, some of them are uh, Christians, Catholic, Orthodox, Jewish, uh, Roma. Uh, Muslim said uh, uh, th these uh, people happen to be uh, from the roots of the uh, Islamic family, so that's that's uh, how how it was uh, for hundreds of years. Uh, uh, Sarajevo was uh, like a little Jerusalem, always called, and uh, the, uh, we really didn't deal with that. You know, we just behaved uh, completely 
naturally the, the somebody passes away he has his uh, just in, in in new york uh, you would see different kinds of uh, uh, you know uh, tra traditions uh, whether it's uh, you know asian or whatever so uh, if you find it well integrated uh, it it's flattering uh, but uh, as i said uh, you know for me in this moment uh, still i i'm completely shocked seeing this movie we, we you yeah. need to tell us more about this this is the second time you brought What's this up was the last Why time you, you saw the film <laughs> uh, because i you know uh, uh, as as everybody understands well i saw this film like 250 times during the work on it so I saw it just uh, once again in uh, 2001 uh, while I was making a film in London uh, and I was, uh, my head was somewhere else. And this time I, I had feeling like I'm uh, showing it to completely new audience and, and completely kind of an audience which would uh, uh, live this film. And I, I was having this like uh, stage fright. Snezhna knows, but yeah, yeah, I, me too. Than... Me too. I totally understand. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was, I was so nervous, really, because it's, it's the last time I've seen this movie. It was like 15 years ago. You know, I was like, oh, and and you, you have no power at all to do anything about it. And what time does change it do it? anything? You know, and you're just there, like that's it. You know, yes. now. I can, I can just uh, t try to explain. But, uh, the first, uh, first uh, big sc uh, screening of this film uh, was in Pula, in huge uh, Roman uh, uh, theater, like 12,000 people inside. And then we were sitting over there, you know, as the movie starts, and we, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know nothing about the movie. I mean, you know better about this movie than us now. Uh, and, and now I see all, all of us, sudden you know, like uh, fifth row over there like uh, of this huge the guy stands up gets up and goes 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 and off he goes <laughs> and I'm in a panic that now it's gonna happen in uh, you know messy way then I see that second guy also stand up go goes 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 and I was all sweat and I want to die and all of a sudden I he I see this first guy runs to his place because he was in the bathroom and the second guy comes so that's uh, that's the feeling I have um, so sorry <laughs> we had a question up there I think Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Sanyo. I am uh, actually from Bosnia as well, grew up in the States. But uh, I just have a comment and a question. Uh, I really appreciate it, uh, as far as the comment, I appreciate it how you, um, how the film had so much taste. And I feel like uh, from my artistic side, uh, just uh, it took me away, not, not seeing the actual scene where uh, Snezhana's character is, uh, uh, is assaulted, but having that feeling and having my imagination go wild just played, uh, you know, huge on that. And then the address undressing scene, uh, as an actor myself, I appreciate when people have my back, and I feel like that was so artistically done that, uh, yeah, it was just beautiful to to watch, um, just in general. And then a uh, question: So you said that you faced uh, criticism as far as. Uh, being one of the first movies to kind of highlight the um, the abuse towards women and how women are treated. And I uh, was so just wondering what type of uh, reaction you got when the movie first came out and uh, what type of criticism and how you kind of dealt with that and how you overcame that. Uh, you know, since I was talking about this uh, uh, earlier, well, I can tell you this. Uh, uh, in my mind, uh, films... Uh, don't do PR work. Uh, films uh, from time to time symbolically uh, raise an issue. This film was one of these films which with, without our intention to tell the truth immediately, we, we were not thinking that we shall be raising the feminism question or question of uh, women uh, behaving and all this. Uh, but uh, not only in our country, Generally, before uh, Pretty Woman appeared, uh, you didn't have so many films uh, uh, dealing with uh, with uh, women as the main characters. You you just take a uh, um, tradition of a, of a titles of a, of a movies. You have a you know like this. Uh, 
you know, our friend says Thank uh, you for it could be. Thank you for pointing this out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's that, that's true. So uh, we, in fact, were also happy uh, to understand that it did something uh, more than we wanted because we were behaving, uh, creating a certain logic which would uh, rightfully uh, reflect logic of uh, of, of life, although not in, in you know in a direct way. So so that was a compliment as well as this uh, this uh, which you said uh, about uh, aesthetics uh, and aesthet not only visual aesthetics but aesthetics. So, well, I would say that's something that we worked much more than on uh, uh, on on, uh, on on this issue because you know. Uh, in fact, what, what I always felt with all, all my uh, uh, associates in a film, that uh, we don't want to make artificial, uh, good-looking something or artificial uh, presentation of something, but, but we want it inside of these, uh, so, so to say, uh, crude ambiences to find uh, something which is nice. So. Thank you, if we succeeded. Thank you. Time for one more question. Should we have one more? Yes. Here? Oh, okay. Yes, I'm oh, curious about the character of Shams, or the policeman. And did you have a particular, uh, maybe, uh, intention with him to highlight the political situation, make a comment on the politics of the socialist Yugoslavia in some way, or was he there just to kind of enlighten the audience about, uh, or give us some background on the main character, Kudus? Uh, no, no, we, you know, in my mind, I never wanted to enlighten the audience if, if there are some things which are uh, logical. Uh, you know, the, uh, humor was mentioned before. It's just a logical uh, part of life, in my mind as well as uh, uh, Islam, as somebody mentioned. So, uh, uh, concerning the shame, so, uh, policeman, he was, uh, in a way, representative of a uh, rigidness of uh, representatives of this, that system. system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that I, can, I, I could feel, we could feel, and we somehow uh, we didn't mean. We didn't think we are making something artificial, something which is not uh, correct. Uh, concerning the uh, character of uh, Kudus, uh, I mean, it's not easy uh, to. First of all, uh, the biggest problem for me, which which uh, one of the biggest problem when we were trying to conceive how we make it, that. Uh, you know that uh, the crime happened, that somebody killed somebody, that, and, and then you try to make it, and that's the partly answer to this uh, trailer also. You understand that you, uh, you start feeling that it's impossible that somebody kills somebody. It's absolutely impossible, because it's, uh, it's unnatural, it's not logical, it's, uh, it's bizarre, I mean, it's out of this uh, planet. Uh, maybe much wider. So, in fact, uh, the the thing was uh, to understand what moved some somebody uh, to to such a drastic move, which is not natural and illogical. Uh, and what are the other parts of him? So that's how this character was created. Do you, someone here, do you want to quickly ask? This will be our final question. Thank you. So um, my name is Noor. Um, my parents are from Bosnia, and I grew up in the States. So watching this movie and hearing about its like cultural impact was really amazing. So uh, my question is, do you think that this movie, like its message and its purpose, is applicable to the uh, context of the country of Bosnia today and its culture as it has grown up and expanded and just evolved since the 80s, and if so, how? Mm -hmm. The toughest question of the evening. <laughs> Saved for last. Well, uh, I do think that every movie is applicable 
if if it has a energy to communicate with the audience, uh, it's applicable. I hope not only to certain locality, but but much wider. I could probably elaborate this much longer, but Snezhna would say that I talk too much. <laughs> no, no, I think that um, definitely that's our, I mean, that's every artistic goal, I would say, you know, to cross the, you know, the, the boundaries, you know, to communicate as far as possible, as further as possible with different places and different people, you know, to exchange and communicate, you know, our experiences. And uh, we only can say that we hope that Kudus would be able to do that uh, because he did it at the time and that that today is it could still be a relevant movie, you know. Um, but it's up to you to say that, you know, to, to feel that or, you know, criticize. I think this concludes our Q&A session. I just want to quickly say, Snežana, we hope to see you back here soon with the sun in Estan, which is fun. We cannot wait. Um, mm -hmm. Thank and, you. Uh, the, yes, uh, and, you know, I, yeah, there is another movie coming. But what I wanted to say, you know, I'm just at the end. I just want to quote Fellini, who said, um, all the stories are already told. We just need to tell them again from the women's point of view. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, that never gets okay. old. <laughs> yes. And uh, Ademir will be back on stage shortly, so please yeah. stick around, Amir, tell us about what's coming up. Yeah, if I remember, I think I remember everything. Um, so we do have an award ceremony, which is going to be happening here, and I'm telling you, it's more exciting than the Oscars. Uh, definitely. It's so tense and it's like, you know, like I'm always standing at the back and like we're just very really nervous, sweating profusely. Um, but we have, okay, so the awards ceremony, you should stick around for that. It's going to be fun. Uh, we'll have the concluding mar uh, remarks also by our director of the film festival, celebrating uh, yet another year of this uh, little, small but important festival that is entirely volunteer run. So you should remember this, that everybody here has sacrificed their time to put this show together. Uh, so yeah. thank you to our volunteers. And, and, in, the, and in the little um, um, break between, the, the while we organize the award ceremony here and bring the golden apples on stage, it's a big moment, uh, you will see a, a presentation from our artist in residence who designed this wonderful uh, graphics. She came from Sarajevo. This was her first uh, time on a plane, I understand, so first uh, 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 time out of the country. And so she will give a little presentation, but Damir Pozderac will say more about her. Mm -hmm. uh, so stick around. And thank you again to our thank guests. You. Thanks for having me.